Hi, welcome to Planetary Calendars, Astrology Portraits. I'm Ralph Dimitris, one of the calendars astrologers. For this week, we're going to look at the chart of the artist Salvador Dali, whose name is synonymous with surrealism. And this was a suggestion from one of our viewers, and Lonnie and I immediately said, oh yes, this will work, because we're both, we might call us aficionados of his work for many years. And when we looked at his chart, we understood why. Because like Sal, we both have Jupiter in Aries. And his Jupiter in Aries is very prominent in his chart, very, very high up in the chart, conjunct the midheaven. So it was like the flag above his castle. Jupiter is how we expand the world. Aries is through creativity and being distinct and unique. And boy, was that Salvador Dali. So we immediately glomped onto that. Then we looked at it and realized, oh my gosh, his son at 20 degrees, Taurus, is conjunct Lonnie's moon, a lovely moon position, which immediately un made us understand why this works so well for us. And my moon is actually opposite that point. So I've always loved Salvador Dali's work. And I remember one time being in the Met in New York and, and spending a huge amount of time looking at one of his pieces in the, uh, in the gallery that I've written about many times, one of his great crucifixion pieces. Now, He's a remarkable person for an artist because he very much reflects that type of personality that likes being in the studio and yet loved being out in the world. In fact, his whole chart is above the horizon. In fact, the only thing below the horizon of the major planet is Uranus, which is in the sixth house below the horizon and 29 degrees Sagittarius, the last degree of Sagittarius, in the sixth house, the area of his craft. And so it shows something unusual about the way in which he worked. And at a time when many people were doing abstract work, he was doing photorealistic work, which was a, a remarkable departure from the time. His leading planet ahead of his sun is his Venus. Not at all surprising in an artist. Many times artists have Venus prominent in this chart in rulership in Taurus. So he has four planets in Taurus, Venus, the Sun, Mercury, and Mars. But because Venus is in rulership, she is the belle of the ball. She's running the show. So the arts became the, his leading way into the world. Now, interestingly, he has Mercury conjunct the Sun, 20 degrees to 23 degrees, retrograde, which Mercury in Taurus is not a witty position. It's not, no one would ever describe Mercury in Taurus as being witty. It's charming, but it's not witty. Retrograde, it means it's very internalized. His Mars is at 25 degrees, so you have the Sun, Mercury, Mars, all within 25 degrees. This is one of the things that gave him tremendous patience as he created his art. Because that type of photorealistic work is a very slow process of craftsmanship, of sketches and preparation and thinking. Dolly was not an artist like Jackson Pollock who could take buckets of paint and spread them out in, in chaotic patterns. It wasn't his style. His style was patient, graceful, aiming for the long-term look. You know, with four planets in Taurus, that's what you get. It was also in the 11th house, so his way of communicating with the world. It's also the place where he made his money. Interestingly, where he really made his money is what's found called the part of fortune. It's a little circle with an X in it, and it tells you where the person makes their money. His is in the 12th house, right, in Gemini. The 12th house is the area of the studio. For all of his drama and all of his great marketing work, it was in the studio that he made his money. It was from his, his canvases. It was from his art. It's in Gemini, the sign of two dimensions and graphics. 
and working through the hands. So he, this was a person who literally worked with his hands in the studio in the 12th house. He also had Pluto there and Vesta there. Pluto there shows, one, the ability to be obsessed by it, to be totally focused on it. And Vesta showed it for him it was a great mission. Studio arts was a mission for him. But why did he become so famous? Well, there we look at this Jupiter in Aries conjunct the midheaven. We also have the, um, the moon in Aries in what's called the Gogolon spot. The Gogolon spot is usually to the right, um, to the west of the midheaven point. And it's in Aries. So his ability to express his unique personality was part of who Dolly was, you know, his wonderful mustache. His mustache was like a piece of art unto itself. It was like performance art. Now, most of his chart is in um, houses 10, 11, and 12. It all concentrated in there. The only thing close to the rising, which was in Cancer, is Neptune. Now, Neptune we traditionally see as the planet of illusion. But it's also a planet of the meteor. Remember, it was... It was um, first discovered in the 1800s at a time when spiritualism was very important. It was a time in which a lot of dream research began. He oftentimes said that his work came from his dreams. And so his communication through his dreams, his communication with those regions beyond the conscious mind, uh, beyond the physical body, were part of how he composed his, his images. What was interesting is that that moon is so elevated in his chart, his moon in Aries. His mother was very, very important in his life, as were his, his father, and his father represented by Saturn in Aquarius in the eighth house. But his wife, Gala, was also very important in his wife, and she was actually the subject of many of his pieces. So the highly elevated moon in Aries uh, became an important... Uh, an important part of his personality, his relationship with her. In fact, later in life, she actually had her own home. He had his studio in his home in one place, and she lived in a separate place. Moon in Aries, feminine as a solitary figure. Now, the Saturn in Aquarius, very strong position, a rulership position, the extrovert or masculine position of Saturn in rulership, is in the eighth house. It's the house of um, birth and death, but it's also the house of inheritance. So I suspect who his father um, provided very well for him, which is an important thing if you're going to be an artist. Because as another artist was telling me recently, well, you know, well, she grew up thinking that you know to be an artist was to starve, and she didn't want to starve, but she ended up becoming an artist anyway. Those kind of things are kind of hard to deny because it's there in the personality. But his Saturn in Aquarius conjunct. Juno, so his wife, so it may have been also that he married well with Gala, that money came down to him that helped him um, pursue his path. He was tremendously successful, but he came to it with a great sense of confidence that, you know, it wasn't like Picasso who went off to Paris and lived in a garret while he painted and really struggled. And, he always had a sense of, with Dolly, that he had a greater sense of ease moving through his work. You know, he didn't have to stand out with his uh, throwing paint onto a canvas. He didn't have to paint fast. Why does a painter paint fast? So they can get things done to sell. He didn't seem as concerned with that. He has four planets in Taurus. They don't rush. <laughs> And remember with the moon in Cancer, I mean the rising in Cancer in the moon in Aries, that rising in Cancer made that moon very powerful. The fact that it's angular, it's at two degrees Aries, and the midheaven's at three degrees Aries, it's an angular moon. It made that moon position, his emotion, his unique, um, uh, unique emotional nature, his relationship to his wife, his relationship to his mother, very powerful. In his, in his personality. So it really is an artist's chart. It's funny that artists oftentimes uh, are not as worldly as other people's charts. They're not as um, extrovert. 
But his chart, because it's so much above the horizon, shown that his career would be out there in the world. And when you look through photographs of Dolly and you look at his artwork, there's a tremendous number of photographs of his unusual, today we'd call them installation art. There wasn't really a term for it at that time. But for one thing, he did a, a photo of him being lifted by his uh, mustache by a helicopter. Incredible photo. That's installation art. How did he do it? He had a piece of glass, and he was standing on the glass, and there was a rope coming up from his, you know, uh, his mustache while a helicopter hovered overhead, not connected to his mustache. But that's how he did it. He did these, these incredibly unique installation pieces. In some ways, he was the creator, Jupiter and Aries, at the Midheaven, of installation art. It's something he's not given credit for, and yet that really is one of the places where he made a great mark on the art world. It's fascinating when you look at his planetary lines and astrocartography. Of course, over Spain, he has these powerful lines showing over the East Coast, coming down through New York and then into Florida. He has these powerful uh, rising and descending lines going through there. Well, he had a home in New York for many, many years, and a great deal of his promotion was done there, and he had great partnerships there. And in Florida, there, of course, is the famous Dali Museum. So, you know, these connections to the places on the earth are really evident in his chart. So I hope you find this look into uh, Dali's chart interesting. We found it fascinating. And uh, make sure you Come visit us on Tuesdays for our portraits. Come visit us on Fridays for our forecast based upon you know the planetary calendar. And make sure you go to spaceandtime.com or planetarycalendar.com to get your calendars and your day planners because you need to know what's going on in this uncertain world. And come back and see us soon.